I will start by giving you like a rough idea about what we're going to be doing. So you're not like totally blind about it. The workshop is based on a very simple principle. And the simple principle is that who we are is not just some random thing, but it's actually our belief systems. Now, this is very hard to understand, and I'll tell you that when I was young, I felt that who I was was my identity, yeah? The family I was growing up, my name, uh, what I wanted to do, what I was doing. And then later I went to, into a spiritual world, and I thought, no, 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 that's not it. What I am, because I can change my persona, I can change my job, I can change my country, I can change all kinds of things. Who I am is something that comes from deep inside. It's kind of like my spirit. It's the things that I feel. And then later, I discovered, to my surprise, that actually what we are is our belief systems. And I will explain to you. One time I was doing a consultation with this woman, and I'd seen another woman back then when I was a shaman. It's a different kind of time. And I was doing these kind of things for friends that would send me their sisters or other people. And I'd seen two people in a row. One was a 25-year-old girl, and the other one was a 55-year-old woman with children, with shops, with a business, with all kinds of things. And as I was listening to the second one, I had this great feeling that she was identical to the first one, although they lived totally different lives. So I couldn't believe it. Why do I have this feeling of deja vu, you know, of like, I know this person because I just saw this person two hours ago. So I started asking her some questions, some kind of like covert questions to see if I was right. So sure enough, everything that I would tell her, she would say yes. I would say, so I guess that when you are in a relationship, you do A, B, C, D, E, F. Yes, how do you know? Indeed, you are a wizard or a shaman or something like that. They're right. So I started asking her questions about her beliefs. And I realized that on most subjects, she had a very similar set of beliefs as the young girl that was two hours before her. She had grown in the same kind of family, in the same kind of, kind of environment, with the same kind of values. And she had basically the same beliefs. And I could guess exactly the most secret things of her persona, but by just knowing these beliefs. I was devastated because when I was a little kid, I was, I was autistic, I was a stutter, I was not kind of like in the top of the social ladder. So most of the time, I just wanted to be just like everybody else. Just to be like everybody else, part of the crowd. Other times when I aspired to be somebody, you know, somebody that people, you know, recognize and they got something to say or to do, or, you know, look at that kid, how well they play basketball or something, it will usually end up in ridicule or being picked on. So most of the time, I wanted to be just nobody, to disappear, to be invisible. For me, every time I was somebody, it was somebody bad, because when people put scrutiny in me, I was found to be wanting. Not very cool, not very popular. My shirts were always out of my trousers. I started, so people would get boom, 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 me trying to say something. And then, eventually, through my spiritual travels, I found, okay, I am somebody, yes? I am my inner feelings, I am this thing that is me, my spirit. And suddenly I found out 
that I am my programming, my beliefs. I couldn't buy it. For three weeks, I was like a wild animal. I was close myself in my house. I wouldn't talk to anybody. And I, I would try to explore what the fuck. After that, I couldn't let it go. So I called a couple of people that I was close to. And I started doing experiments. Then I started to really find things out in such a clarity. You know, they say science is when you try the same thing again and again, the same experiment. It always works. It always worked. I could try to categorize people into various categories. I know it sounds kind of like cynical to put them into categories, but it was the best I could do at the time. I could just put rough categories of beliefs yeah, and figure them out. Their actions, their reactions, their thoughts, their emotions would be predictable just because of their beliefs. Our beliefs are formed because of things that we've been told, things that we have been taught, things that we have found out of experience or believed because of an experience. They can be all kinds of things. What was most important that I discovered that was revolutionary at the time is many, many years ago, is that every disagreeable thought or feeling or emotion or anything like that was always due to a paradox. They tried to keep two contradictory and mutually exclusive beliefs at the same time. And after a lot of research, I realized that the whole world, you know, the World Health Organization has declared that depression and mental illnesses and fatigue and all this kind of stuff, they are becoming the number one killer and destroyer of well-being and health in the world. By 2025, number two, it's not cancer or other things that people are afraid of. And I realized that it's because every kind of therapy, whether traditional like psychotherapy, psychoanalysis, or non-traditional like shamanism, Reiki, all kinds of things, craniosacral, all alternative ther therapies that exist, are the biggest industry in the world almost like now. It's like after food it's become the wellness industry. Everybody has a shrink, everybody cares about their mental health, everybody wants to go to wellness therapy, everybody reads. It's like big, because more and more people suffer from it. There's a whole industry of pharmaceuticals for antidepressive drugs and all kinds of things. And it is because the whole deal is not about trauma. All these things try to fight trauma, alleviate trauma, do all kinds of things, solve trauma, comfort trauma, you know. But they're backing up the wrong tree, and people are becoming even more depressed and mentally ill. The problem is paradox, and I demonstrate it to people, and I show it. And I can totally help people in two weeks that may have done 10 years of psychoanalysis, of therapy, of all kinds of things, all kinds of practices, anything you can imagine. We can resolve things in two weeks simply by taking the distorted glasses out of people's faces and be able to affect not only their mind, but their body and everything about them. Because as we demonstrate, everything is connected. So I've done this for many, many years, and I've been working on this for many, many years. That's why I, I believe I'm here. That's why I believe I'm qualified to help people. Because what I do is science. I use shamanism. I use gestalt therapy. I use everything that exists in the world, I've studied everything through these years. And I use whatever works. But most importantly, it works. So basically what I do, I'm a paradox hunter. I talk with people, 
and I find out their paradoxes. There are many paradoxes that are universal. Everybody has them. And they have been born out of uh, societal and survival reasons. And these are things that we can explore more in a workshop. But basically, I look at people's paradoxes. And then I show them to them. And then I show them exactly what they do to them, how they create the reality that they live in. And then they can choose one of the two or one of the three. And once you resolve the paradox, all the disagreeable parts inside you, usually they express also disagreeable parts inside you express in uh, self-hatred, self-destruction many times, destruction of good things in your life, yeah, kind of like patterns where you go, for example, through different relationships and every time it seems to be different and ends up somehow the same, kind of thing like that. Or when your your life is doing really well and then suddenly you either get like this feeling of dissatisfaction or you're getting this feeling of foreboding that kind of poisons everything and then somehow you do something to fuck it all up because it was going so well. Shit like that. So what will happen in our consultation is we're going to talk, I'm going to ask you some questions and then I'm hopefully I'm going to give you a diagnosis about what is automating your life and turning you into a robot instead of a choosing human being. Because like me and like everybody, you are programmed by these beliefs. So basically when I found this out, I was desperate because I thought, fuck, I, I, I'm a robot. I'm a product of my programming like everybody else. But there's one interesting thing. I cannot escape my beliefs, but I can change them. I can become my own self-programmer, decide on my own software, and then I can be in charge of everything. So, now I know who I am. I am a being of choice, the chooser. I can cho choose everything. I no longer say, oh, what can I do? This is how I am. I'm an addictive personality, I'm lazy, I'm this and that. How can I do? Ah, oh, I have these traits. No, not the problem. Anything I don't like, I can change. What happened is that once you remove the distorting glasses of your beliefs from your face, suddenly you have amazing side effects. When you see the world clearly, you become very powerful in everything, in relationship, in business, in everything in life. And this is why we promise all these outlandish things in the whiteboard. So, welcome, yes, I don't bite although I may make you feel very uncomfortable. But this is a taster of what happens in the workshop. You cannot give a taster of the workshop because the workshop is like a two week, 12 hour minimum a day roller coaster ride both emotionally and perceptually. We blow you away. It's the most flamboyant movie or fantasy book you've ever read is nothing compared to what happens in the workshop. But I'm going to give you a little taster of what it is to have a consultation with the